today's lesson is all about calculating gravitational field strength. So gravitational field strength is calculated using the formula little g is equal to capital G times m divided by r squared. So what we need to know, of course, is what does each of these letters stand for? So we'll start with little g. Little g is the gravitational field strength. Now, gravitational field strength is a unit of newtons per kilogram. Now, just to explain where that unit comes from, newtons per kilogram. Well, a newton is a unit of force. Uh, which is a push or a pull uh, on an object. And per kilogram, that would be per uh, kilogram or the mass of the object that's generating the gravitational field. So like a planet, usually like in a lot of the examples we're going to be talking about, that would be the mass of the Earth in kilogram. So Newton per kilogram, to break it down, Newton per kilogram is actually equal to, well, what is a Newton? A Newton is one kilogram times meter per second squared. And if it's a newton per kilogram, that's divided by kilogram. So the kilograms over kilograms will cancel. And really, the unit for gravitational field strength, that newton per kilogram, is equivalent to meters per second squared, which is our unit for acceleration. So another way to say gravitational field strength is the acceleration that an object is, uh, is experiencing due to the gravitational field of another object. All right. so. Just remember, newton per kilogram, it's not a unit, but it's the same thing as acceleration, which is why the gravitational field strength here is often given as 9.81 meters per second squared instead of newtons per kilogram. It's the same thing. Now, big G, that is the universal gravitational constant as discovered by Newton all those years ago. That is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And I always have to look up the units for this. This is newton times meter squared per kilogram squared. Now, when it comes to the units for something like this, um, basically, there's just units to make the equation work. All right? and, uh, constant is the number that, that makes an equation work. Um, and that's what Newton discovered the value would have to be in order for these formulas to work. All right, mass, m. This is going to be uh, the mass of the object that is creating the gravitational field. So in most of the questions you're going to encounter in Science 30, that would be the mass of the Earth, or it might be the mass of another planet, like the mass of Mars or the mass of Venus. That would have to be given. It's not something that you're going to have to find usually. That's, in Science 30, that's almost always given. R is equal to the radius, which means this is the distance measured in meters from the center of the object that's creating the gravitational field. So if it's a planet like Earth, it will be from the center of the Earth, not from the surface of the Earth. So we always have to watch out for that uh, when we're doing calculations. Because if we have, say, a planet, well, say it's the Earth, and you've got some satellite that's orbiting, and say that you're given that the satellite is orbiting at a distance of, well, I don't know, 50 kilometers. Well, then we first of all have to convert that into meters, so that would be 5.0 times 10 to the third meters. And then you have to add on the radius of the Earth. You'd have to add on that distance uh, because the distance of the satellite is the distance above the surface of the Earth plus the, radi uh, plus the radius of the Earth. Radius of the Earth will be given, it's in the data booklet, along with all the other constants down on page two. All right, so let's take a look at some diploma exam questions and see what could be asked here. So here we have a typical one. It talks about a telecommunication satellite is in orbit 4.21 times 10 to the 7 meters from the center of the Earth. So this number is important. That's going to be our radius. Now, we don't have to worry about adding the distance, uh, the radius of the Earth to the distance above the Earth because this is from the center of the Earth. So they've thrown us a bone here. They made it a little bit easier on this question. Uh, the other values we're going to need are constants that are found in your data book. So our formula is small g is equal to big G m over r squared. Now the only value they've given us in the question is r. But we can look up this one in the data booklet and we can look up this one in the data booklet. So not uh, terribly difficult to figure out this one. All right, so g is equal to, remember, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 
Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. That is on page two of your data book, but that is the gravitational constant. Multiply it by, in this case, we don't need the mass of the satellite because the satellite's not creating the gravitational field, it's experiencing the field. What's creating it is the Earth. So we need the mass of the Earth, which again, given the data booklet, that's 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Now, divide that by r squared, so that would be our radius, which is 4.21 times 10 to the 7 meters. And that, don't forget to square it. Now, take a little bit of time, maybe pause the video here and work it out on your calculator. Key thing to watch out for is order of operations. If you go gravitational constant times mass of Earth, divide it by R and then square it, you're gonna square the whole thing. You only wanna square the radius. So make sure you use your brackets um, when you enter this in. All right, so pause it for a second, do the calculation, we'll see what you come up with. All right, well, here's what I came up with in the answer. Putting it into my calculator, I get an answer of 0 decimal 22504, and then there's some more digits. And my unit here, if we cancel our units, meter is going to cancel with meter squared, uh, kilogram is going to cancel with kilogram. Now we're going to end up with, uh, sorry, meter squared is going to cancel meter squared. We're going to end up with newtons per kilogram, which is exactly what we expect. So newtons per kilogram. Now, uh, this is not the format they want the answer in. We have to pay attention to significant digits here. They have asked us in this question to answer it in the form of a dot b c times 10 to the negative d. So we need three significant digits, a dot b c and we need it in scientific notation, times 10 to the negative whatever d is going to be. So, first of all, I have to change this into three digits. So I'm just going to do it up here where I have a little bit more room. So this 0 0.22504 whatever newtons per kilogram to three digits will be 0 0.225. I don't need to round up because after the five we have a zero. Now, to make it scientific notation, I'm going to have to move the decimal over one place right there to make this 2 decimal 2, 5 times 10 to the, and I move the decimal to the right one place. So that would be negative because it's to the right and negative 1. So 2.25 times 10 to the negative 1 newtons per kilogram. So when I enter it into my uh, exam, when I key this in, I would put 2. Don't worry about the decimal because that's a dot b c. So 2 dot 2, 5 times 10 to the negative. I don't have to worry about putting the negative here because it has a negative sign right there. So just for the 1, for the negative 1. So 2, 2, 5, 1 is how I'd answer that question. All right, so there's an example where we have to do a calculation. Now, let's take a look at an example where we have to kind of interpret some information here. I hope this isn't too dark. I hope this shows up for you okay. I'm just going to have to get rid of this recording button so it's out of the way of the question. All right, so in this question, we've got a diagram here. It says a satellite has been orbiting the Earth uh, and it will soon be moved to a new orbit that goes through point X as shown below. So the satellite here is being moved to point X, which means it's being moved some distance further away from the surface of the Earth. In this question, we don't actually have to calculate anything. It says as the satellite is moved to point X, Earth's gravitational field stretch, the position of the satellite will. Now, we have two choices here. A and B say increase. C and D say decrease. So we can eliminate two of those answers because they're, they're opposite of each other, obviously. Uh, if we move something further away, the gravitational field strength is going to get weaker. And the reason it's going to get weaker is looking at the formula, gm over r squared. Well, if we move it further away, the value of r squared is going to get bigger r squared here is a larger number than it was before. And we're dividing, that's the line means here, we're dividing by a larger number. Well, when you take a number and divide it by a number, and that number is larger than previously, well, then the overall value is going to be lower. Divide by a larger number, you get a lower answer. For example, if we had 10 divided by 
say five, our answer is two. Well, if we make this a larger number, 10 divided by 10, well, that's one. The, number, the value of this goes down. So the value of G is going to decrease. So we've automatically eliminated answer A and answer B. Those answers, both A increase, it's not going to increase. Now, how much is it going to decrease? Well, uh, or why is it going to decrease? Uh, answer C says decrease because the mass of the Earth does not change. Well, that is a true statement. The mass of the Earth doesn't change. But if the mass doesn't change, then that means this value is constant, which means the top of the fraction, the numerator of the fraction, is not changing. Well, if that's not changing, then the value of the fraction isn't going to change. So that's not the reason why uh, the gravitational field decreases. So we look at D. It's going to decrease because the distance between Earth and the satellite will be greater. The distance between Earth and the satellite will be greater. That's R. And when we square it, R squared is going to get bigger. And that's exactly what we were talking about here. If R squared gets bigger, then the value of the expression becomes smaller. So our answer in this case would be D.